Hey guys, my name is Frank. This is the Poth on Programming video log, and today I'm going to show you how to make a JavaScript calculator. It's not going to calculate JavaScript, it's going to calculate numbers, but it uses the JavaScript eval method to evaluate text that you enter into the calculator screen here. So if I do 2 times 2, the eval method would basically just take the string 2 times 2 and evaluate it, and when I press the answer key, it's going to tell me what the answer is. So I have a couple different functions that I've put into this calculator. I've got a couple different things that I can do. For example, I can delete the last input. I can totally clear the input. I have a set of instructions here just because I thought it could use some instructions. Um, and the methods are all things that you'd find in the JavaScript math library. So for example, pi is just equal to math.pi. Power would be the function to get a number to the power of something. So 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So I'm just going to jump right into the code and show you guys what went into creating this. A lot of CSS went into creating this. So I'm actually going to look at some CSS today. First thing, though, before I do anything, I have to define all of my HTML elements inside of the body tags. So I have a, a div with the ID of calculator. That's going to be my calculator div. And that's going to contain everything that you see on my calculator. All the buttons, uh, all the hidden buttons that you don't see, and the screen. So this div is going to be the calculator screen, obviously. And then I have a whole bunch of calculator buttons and it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, you just look at it. Um, it's just a div. It has the value of whatever the button's value is. So this would be the clear button, CLR right here. Um, has an ID that corresponds to what it does, calculator dash clear. Uh, if you go down this list, you can see all the different function keys. and Well, not function keys, but operator keys like plus, minus, times divide and I mean I can't really say much about this this is really all it does and this is the entire HTML file right here so it's not very big it's only 71 lines and there's quite a bit of white space so finally after I define all of my calculator element stuff I come down here and I call the calculator.js script before I get into the calculator.js script I'm gonna get into the calculator.css so I defined some CSS variables up here for the colors of my function keys because I'm going to reuse those colors for the buttons associated with those function keys. So if I were to change uh, the F3 color to yellow, save that and refresh my screen, I'm going to get yellow F3 keys, which is kind of cool. I'm going to stick with the old version because I think it was more thematically appropriate and down here in the bottom or in the body in the bottom in the body but in the body tag we are going to define a grid using the CSS grid box layout and that's basically going to be responsible for placing all of our buttons on the calculator so I'm just going to scroll through kind of slow take a look at this definitely go access the source code on my GitHub page. I'll put a link to that in the description. Here is the calculator tag, and this is going to use the grid box layout to lay out all of our buttons. So the top row is just all screen. That's this right here. Then I have my functions row. I've got the Q, I've got the, or the question mark, I've got the clear, F1, 2, and 3. Here I've got my numbers. And it's kind of nice because in the CSS, you could actually lay out what it would look like physically in the HTML. And I've got command keys here. I've got a comma, my zero, and my period keys down here, comma, zero, and period. Uh, command seven and command eight, delete and answer. So, and then just some CSS to define all this stuff. I'm not really going to get too into the CSS. I feel like CSS is one of those things that you just have to memorize I guess, and learn. There's nothing, there's no, there's not a lot of pragmatic thinking to CSS. It's more of a layout. It's kind of like, I don't know. I don't really like CSS, but 
sometimes, and actually most of the time, it's more useful than using JavaScript to lay everything out. I don't recommend using JavaScript to lay stuff out, especially if you can do it with CSS. Just CSS to me is just a lot of work. I mean, look at this. This is ridiculous. This is just telling all the different HTML elements to reside in the appropriate grid area. So there's a lot of stuff going on here in the CSS, but it's all the same thing. I'm just doing it over and over again to place everything where it needs to go. The cool stuff happens inside of the calculator.js file. So <clears throat> how this works, I'm just going to scroll down. Actually, most of this is just getting elements from the HTML. If I scroll all the way to the bottom, this whole program is only 250 lines. Once again, as always, lots of white space and comments. So the real meat of this is inside of the update function. And the update function is only a few lines long. So all it does is it takes the value inside or the displayed value of the button you press. So say I press three, it's going to take three. Controller.value would be three. It's going to pass it into this giant switch statement. Basically, the switch statement just tests to see if our value is something that we can have. And you could probably use regex for this. I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but it's the way I did it. I'm sure there's a better way. But basically, it just checks to see if all these values or if the value that we entered is something acceptable. So in this case, three, three is in our switch statement. So if we press three, it's going to execute this switch statement. It's going to add controller.value. So three to our screens inner HTML. So we get three. If we press it again, we're just going to add three to that inner HTML again. So if I do 333, we just add those threes to our inner HTML there and we break out of the switch statement. And that's it. And different things do different things, obviously. So if I were to press something other than three, I might execute another case of the switch statement. So let's go down to the <coughs> enter case or the ands case for answer. So I can also manipulate this keyboard with my keyboard or the number pad and everything with my keyboard. So if I want to just use my keyboard for this, and there's no way of, well, I guess you won't see my mouse over the key, but if I want to use the keyboard, I can use the keyboard to insert numbers, hit delete. I can add operators, so I can say 3 plus 3 on my keyboard, press enter to simulate hitting the answer key, or I can use a mouse or a touchpad. So this is a really cool calculator app that has a lot of different user inputs that you can use with it. So... Let's look at how we actually do the calculations. And it's kind of cheating because I'm using the eval method. But if I were to press enter or ands, which is this key right here on my calculator, all it does is it hands that screen.innerHTML into an eval method and just sets the resulting number to have... Uh, up to 10 decimal places to eliminate rounding errors, catches any errors, and if there is an error, so let's say we do 6-6 six, six times nothing, we just do 6-6 six, six plus, it's going to catch that error, and it's going to throw a JavaScript error. So this might be a little confusing, but unexpected end of input, that's pretty close to accurate. So rather than defining my own errors, I just use the, the built-in JavaScript errors. So that's pretty handy. But this is basically our calculator right here. And that's, it's kind of sad. It's, I feel like it's cheating almost, but everything about this calculator is just defining HTML elements, getting references to those elements in our JavaScript, formatting everything with CSS, all really simple CSS and basic manipulation of the document element. And it's just really simple. All of the calculations come into play right here. The only interesting thing that we really have to do here is because we don't want our user to see math.py, which is what JavaScript will be parsing, we just replace math.py with just pi. So how do we get math out of that scenario there? Well, if I come up to the top of my JavaScript file, I get all the functions from math 
and I just store them in different function names that are more simplified. So instead of seeing math.py on the screen, you're only going to see pi. Instead of seeing pow or math.pow on the screen, you're just going to see pow. So pretty simple. And that's it. This is the JavaScript calculator. It's really, really simple. It's functional. It works. well you can use it on your smartphone you could use it on your desktop you can use the keyboard you can use the mouse you could use your finger touch input and really the whole thing is just making the buttons formatting the buttons and having one big gigantic switch statement test to see which one of those buttons you hit and carry out a couple different functions to handle that input and show you a result the only other cool thing that I did here was these function keys switch between these different function buttons or input buttons. So that's real easy. When I hit F1, I just change all the values of these keys, all the CSS display values to dis uh, grid, I think. And I set all the values of these sets of buttons equal to none. So if I come up here into my... UI object. I have these different functions. When I press F1, I call the hit F1 function. Um, and as you can see, I just get the button labeled with, I get the buttons labeled with the different values here. So this plus button literally displays a plus. I have that button labeled with a plus inside of my JavaScript. And I set its style equal to grid when I press F1. I do the same thing for all of these buttons. I set the display style to grid. And for all of these buttons, I set the display style equal to none. If I hit F2, I do the same thing. I just set the the F2 buttons display property to grid, and I set the F1 and F3 buttons display property to none. So it's really, 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 really simple. I couldn't believe how simple it actually was when I started doing this because this seems like a really beginner thing to do, like a beginner example to do, and I've never done it before. I just thought it would be fun to do and turns out it's really simple to do with JavaScript I'm not sure if I'm cheating or not by using the eval method but it feels a little like cheating but you know what <clears throat> it works just fine for doing whatever you have to do and all these functions work I even included a random the random function to get just a random value and if you want to make your own functions, it's really simple. Instead of pointing to the different functions inside of math, you could just make your own. And just, you know, you just make your own math function. Pretty simple. So you, you don't have to rely on math. JavaScript, the JavaScript math object, you can make your own math functions if you really want to, but go download this source code from my GitHub page and fiddle around with it. It's a functional calculator and it works pretty well. And that's all I really have to say about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I didn't really go too much in detail on any of this, but I hope you guys go check out the source code and stick around for the next video. So I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>